Um, I'm Howie Fong. I'm the Director of Product Development at the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, and we're here to talk about editor engagement. Um, but let's do introductions first. So, yeah, Fabrice Florin. I'm a product manager for uh, editor engagement tools. Karen Gladstone. I do editor engagement experiments. Jimmy Wales. I founded Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Oliver Keys. I'm the community liaison on product development, which means that I go around beating developers with a stick whenever they do something wrong. At least I think that's how it's, it's meant to work. Yeah. So um, I, I wanted to say a quick couple words on uh, what this team does and, and what it doesn't do, because I'm not sure if people are familiar with the inner workings of the foundation. Um, what we're mainly responsible for is understanding things from a user point of view, right? So none of us uh, are actually developers in our primary roles, although I think, you know, Brandon at some point was a developer, and I think Oliver is learning, um, uh, learning to code. But um, our function within the organization is, is not to write code. I, we have Terry and his team for that. I saw him somewhere. Terry. Terry. I think he might have left, I, I don't know, whatever. Um, but, but, but so what we do is we try to understand things from the user perspective. Um, uh, as, uh, if, if you guys are, if any of you are uh, familiar with software development, um, you guys probably know the tendency of, you know, when developers write code, they tend to write it for people that are like them. Um, and that's, you know, no fault to the developers. I think we all kind of like, you know, you know we, we bring our own perspective to our work. Um, but. We also know that our community, um, you know, some of the folks are technical and some of them are not, right? So when you have uh, features that are written by developers for developers, they don't really speak to a wider audience. Um, and that's really the role of this team, is to uh, work with devel de developers to make sure that the tools that we write are actually written for the people that are gonna, are gonna use them. Um, so what we do is really try to understand what our users are trying to accomplish, what their expectations are, so that when we develop tools, they end up meeting these expectations and hopefully end up delighting our users. That's really our goal, to, to really make kick-ass features that you know, people want to use over and over again. So that's kind of what we do as a team. Um, I also thought I might define editor engagement really quickly, and it's not Charlie Rose. Um, it's, because I, you know, this term is bandied about a lot. And it's really not, you know, editor engagement is, uh, as a term, is, is not very helpful. Um, but for this session, I thought we might define it as uh, features that help uh, attract and retain the right kind of editors uh, to Wikipedia. Now, I, I know it's not a perfect definition. There's, there's no actor in this thing. No one in this definition is, is doing the attracting and retaining. Um, and, you know, we can have a discussion around what the right type of editor is. But um, if people are, are okay with this definition to move forward, I think it'll be helpful to kind of have this in mind as we, um, we think about uh, editor engagement. So does that work for folks? By the way, Howie, um, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, cool. So we have a couple slides, um, but we wanted to keep this more free form. So we'll walk through the slides, but if you guys want to talk about whatever, just you know, raise your hand, interrupt us, and you know, we'll we'll take it from there. So I'll give it to Oliver. He has some uh, uh, opening questions to just get a gauge for who's in the audience. I'm pretty sure I just trod on something valuable. Um, <laughs> could you switch to the question slide? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this works. So Jimmy, you saw in his presentation, does this thing of, uh, you know, when, when did you all join Wikipedia? Um, this year, for the first time, thanks to an audience member, it was the recent editions highlighted. Um, and I was wondering if we could do the same thing here. Like, so how many of you um, joined between 2011 and 2012? Man, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> 2001. <laughs> ah. <laughs> this is this is what happens when you have all the slides behind you. Um, <laughs> this should make things slightly easier. I can see now. Can everyone still hear me? Yeah. Excellent. Um, <laughs> it's okay. a wiki. Oh no. <laughs> But so there's quite a number of you who are then new editors or newer editors, um, which is always good to see. 
because that's not really representative of the core community as a whole, or, you know, with many attendees as a whole. Most of the time it's, it's the old hands, such as myself. Um, so how many of you, including those people, have engaged with a new editor in the past week? Like, someone who hasn't been around for very long, like, quite clearly, maybe they've got a red link to user page, maybe their contributions history say they don't go back very long, so. Uh, spoken to. Could be anything. Could be telling them off. It could be giving them advice. Could be. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Sure. Does that have to be Wikipedia? Uh, it could be any one of the projects. I mean, the, 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 the issues affect every project. Um, and again, that's a fairly small number of people, given the number of people who are here. Um, you know, we don't have that many newbies coming in these days. But as a third question, how many of you could do with some help in whatever areas you actually work in? And that's a much larger show of hands. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> so, I'm just going to see how much play I actually have here. The answer appears to be very little. This could be a problem. Um, could use this one. Hmm? This one's got more play. Indeed. Oh, there's the one over there. We, we kind of sketched out this big plan of how things should work, and it fell apart, you know, two minutes in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was that a hand up over there? Oh, no, there's like sound coming out. <laughs> Not you. <laughs> Important qualifier there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, like white noise, or again, does that not really distinguish between? <laughs> Yeah, I can sort of hear it. Um, I, I'm not sure if there's anything we can do about that. <laughs> Does this work? Yes. Um, so the editors from before 2011. Hands up. <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> who, who wants a microphone to ask some questions? OK. Uh, I work in the file name space primarily and um, other ba large backlogs that no one else ever looks at. So it's large backlogs? Yes. And you obviously could do some more help though? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of help? What kind of help? Yeah. Oh, well, um, there's a page WP colon GBD, the great backlog drive, which is just a listing of lots and lots of backlogs. And any of them, whatever strikes your fancy. There's for, for copy editing, there's for file work, there's for template work, there's 100,000 articles that need more sources and some equally large mind-boggling number of articles that have no sources at all. Just pick something and do it. I mean, they've been there since before any of us have been editors. I'm gonna edit it to make it clear nothing has tense because the page acts like it all happened already. Oh, well, yes. Um, <laughs> It was run by one user who kind of disappeared and then was run by me, and I eventually threw up my hands and wrote a signed post piece about how we were all doomed and then stopped paying <laughs> attention to it. Thank you. Um, but I, I, I think that brought up a few useful points. The first is that um, there are large backlogs of things that need to be done, things that have to be done. Um, the second is that we don't have an overabundance of users uh, who can coordinate these efforts or, or users who can um, help drive these things forward. Like you were saying that um, there was it, this great backlog drive was run by one guy, and then when he left, you had to take over, and then it was too big a task for you to handle as one guy. Yes. Because yeah, mm, because everyone has real world demands, um, like editors and volunteers. Uh, you can only take a certain amount of time from each person, and this requires splitting it up. So we're dealing with a situation where um, we've got big backlogs and not many people to uh, deal with them, and not a great chunk of people coming into the community. Um, and I think that's a, a good basis on which to start talking about the plans we've got to um, resolve these problems, to make sure that we do have the population to fix the things that bug us, the, the backlogs, the massive list of requested articles that don't yet exist. Like, there's 50 kilobytes for maths, which we're meant to be good at. 
Is, is that a, a common thing? Does anyone else have any uh, experience that's similar to that? So, yes. uh, you guys can hear me. I can't hear myself. Um, so basically, um, this past, I want to say my winter break was pretty much hell because articles for creation, we had like, we basically decided to start like, if you were creating a new article, we put links everywhere that would be like, yeah, you should go to Articles for Creation. So we, new page patrols went, I don't want to say, probably went down, but it went up. Basically, everything went to Articles for Creation. So we had the same amount of editors in, like, ten times the normal amount of, like, submissions. So it made it virtual hell for a lot of people there. So it's we're running, actually, a backlog of about 400 articles, 400 to 800 is average, when it used to be, like, 40 to 80. Um, and it's it's a submission thing that we've always tried to figure out. Like, we're trying to make it easier for people at the same time at Wikipedia, but, like, to not have, like, a lot of the submissions that come in are absolute crap. And, like, it's trying to figure out how do we get these people to realize, like, you shouldn't be editing it because what you're... Well, no, it's because we... T we, I was talking to a user yesterday, and they were t saying how they talk to the people and be like, why are you editing? And they'll be like, well, my boss told me to, or I'm being paid to do this. And like, they get, basically, when they find out like the reasons that they shouldn't be editing, because there are all these rules, they're like, oh, maybe like I'm not going to try this. But like we need to just make it a more prominent sometime, I feel like, would help like make it easier for a lot of us in the end. So what you're talking about there, uh, we have a project that will, that is actually, it's sort of halfway in the bag at this point. Uh, called uh, the article creation workflow and it's a sort of an experiment to see what kind of you know it's really confusing to create articles especially you know if you're an anonymous user um, because I mean we don't want they're not allowed to which is fine but there's really no easy way to tell people that that's what's going on so it's, it's horribly confusing and uh, one of the subtle things that we want to do is actually, it's not a tool to make it easier to create articles, it's actually designed to subtly discourage you from creating an article. <laughs> uh, the reason being is that, is that what you're talking about the, it, 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 is I call, my, it, I call it the, uh, my recently deceased grandfather problem, is when people uh, who are working in good faith, or trying to, uh, create an article about their grandfather who just died and then it gets nuked out from orbit uh, within seven minutes and uh, they're very upset and sad and you know they get really angry with us because you know we've disrespected their family or done whatever but these are the same people who could also otherwise be productive good editors uh, we just kill them very early on so the goal is to prevent that scenario from happening is to like get that one or two percent to, to where we're not we're not doing that. There's a question over there. I do a lot of reviewing of the articles for creation, and the problem I have with it is the complete inconsistency of the standards that the reviewers are using. That what I have mainly been doing the last month is going through the ones that are rejected and accepting them because they were rejected for qualities that would not make them a good article, but would certainly pass AFD. On the other hand, there and at New Page Patrol, I also see people passing over the most obvious and the most important problems, particularly copyright. And we need some way of educating and checking and giving feedback to the people doing these projects. I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> and we will be t we will be talking about page triage and the curation toolbar uh, in a little bit, and we'll we'll bring that right back up. Your com your comment about um, inconsistency uh, for accepting things is actually something we're very well aware of. Unfortunately, it's not really a foundation thing that we can address because it's very much a community norms and social thing. Uh, we see every day an article that gets gets rejected at articles for creation that if the user had just created it in the main space it would have been patrolled and no, nothing would have nobody would have thought of it so this is like a, a different thing we we uh, we actually believe that the entire process like all of these things should possibly be looked at because they they are very confusing um, and you know if my goal is to do anything is to actually reduce that overall Let's do one more. Okay. Um, 
the could the question wait? We could. Uh, I just got to ask. Um, so, like, is, is there anyone else with uh, who has a, wants to talk about a, like a specific situation where they need help? It doesn't have to be you know a numerical backlog. Like, I do a lot of good article writing, and I've noticed passively while going through that there's this massive backlog of, of things that need to be reviewed but aren't. Um, Um, I'm pretty active with the sort of helping new users, um, both in IRC and on various talk pages and stuff like that. And um, I know you sort of had a pet project of trying to reform the help pages, and I was wondering if you're going to talk about that, because I'd love to see where that's going, um, just because the um, help pages right now are sort of very, sort of they're kind of variable in what they tell you to do. They're really confusing in how they're organized. So I was just sort of hoping that that would come up, because that's a place where I think it would be very helpful to me. Uh, we, we can talk about that. My, actually, as, as a demonstrator, has anyone here tried to use um, help tables? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> keep, yeah. Keep your hands up if Try. it was in any way useful to you. Really? <laughs> it's. For, for those of you, yeah, for those of you who haven't used it, it was this help page, like, written before the dinosaur extinction um, that just lists, like, 500 different possible permutations of ways to build a table, all of which are out of date <laughs> and not things that we recommend you use. And, and, like, it's, it's the example I use of um, the help, the, the problems we have with documentation for new users on Wikipedia, which is they are very... Um, overblown because they were designed by committee and sort of <coughs> gradually add edge cases over and over time without actually removing things that are no longer valid. Um, I, I'm not going to be working on it directly because we've got um, Peter Coombe, who's a research fellow. Right there. Who's He's right there. <laughs> yes. Peter's over there. He's a, a foundation fellow doing work on uh, help pages, and he's doing a talk on the work he's been yeah. doing. I'm doing the fellows panel on Friday. Uh, yeah, um, he he is doing some awesome work, and he's taken over, and so I just keep back, relax, and work sixty-hour weeks instead. Much easier. Cool. Um, so I, I think you know this that provides a lot of good uh, kind of basis for what we're going to talk about. Um, kind of the notion of you know needing more help and having more people to do it, and the help systems basically uh, sucking really bad. Um, what, I, what I'd like to do is, uh, Karen has actually done some really interesting research on um, what we're calling uh, one, one K plus editors. Um, and these are editors that have crossed the uh, thousand edit, edit threshold um, over the past couple months. Um, and these, uh, in our view, could be people that uh, could help out. And there's some interesting things that she's found. So. Uh, so we did a little bit of uh, research uh, to see who on English Wikipedia, uh, that's the site I have the most data for, um, how many people are actually crossing that line of making their 1,000th edit to the article namespace. We found that something like five to six uh, editors are crossing that line per day. Um, so we decided to uh, start giving them barn stars. Um, so our, our motivation in that is that uh, a thousand edits to the article namespace is kind of inherently praiseworthy. Like they're d they're doing good work. Um, it's a milestone that is unlikely to be reached by people just doing vandalism. Uh, <laughs> it suggests um, the potential for these to be really highly active Wikipedians in the making who can contribute in other ways. Uh, so what we found is that these folks were remarkably similar to other studies we have done. Um, they had the same types of motivations, um, but with one exception. Um, they're not involved in the community. These, the, these people we talked to um, that we've been giving the barn stars to, they're not here. They're not talking to you, to, to the community. They're not um, getting involved in other aspects of the projects. They're just out there editing kind of on their own. And um, I'll, I'll let you guys just read that if you want. But, uh, why this is interesting to us is that these are people that can help you. Um, you know, the guy over there who's this, the solo person uh, the working. Man going. I'm having Got trouble it. reading my own slides this way, so. <laughs> Uh, do you want to read I, I, I can read. I can read them. So the first one is um, some of these 1K editors don't have talk pages. 
um, and others don't use them, which when I found this out, I was like, are you, are you kidding me? It's like you have a thousand edits and, and you don't even have a talk page. That's something that I think most of the uh, people within our community kind of assume that people have and know how to use, but that's actually not the case for a lot of these, um, a lot of these editors. Uh, point number two is they don't necessarily know about the existence or location of policy pages. Um, and this is also, you know, again, uh, uh, surprising, not quite as surprising as not having a talk page, but, you know, again, a lot of these goes to the theme of they're not really making it into, um, into the deeper parts of our community. They don't necessarily know what a barn star um, or wiki love is. Um, they're used to getting deletion notices. Um, and this one I thought was pretty interesting too, not focused on discussion or arguments or gaining consensus. And it seems like a lot of these folks, um, they find corners of content and they just, they just simply write on their own. Yeah, so most of these folks were primarily engaged in writing about uh, their local culture. Um, that was probably about 50% of the people we talked to were focused on local culture wherever they lived. They were just you know, filling out those articles. Um, that was second to that was pop culture. So people writing about, you know, their thing is happening that they're interested in. And the last one is they don't necessarily know about the village pump, right? So folks within the community obviously know there's a ton of discussion that happens um, in that forum. <laughs> and these users, by and large, are just completely oblivious that, you know, village pump even exists. Um, so we did some uh, qualitative coding about whether or not these these folks were making edits that uh, would be useful to us. And we found that on the whole, um, they were. Um, and these are people that we would like to engage. We saw that some 91% of the edits these guys were making were, were worth keeping. So why I wanted to talk about this is that these are the people we need to start engaging with that we're, that I think can help you. Uh, and we can open this up discussion in a little bit to figure out like where <coughs> we can help connect. Um, so what does the uh, automated account there mean? Oh, automated these are, account? Uh, these, those are people using tools to send us. Oh. Yeah. I saw you had a question. Um, this, this is going to be awfully contrary, but have you considered the fact that because they haven't talked to the community, um, that's why they lasted long enough to make a thousand. <laughs> 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 I, I am very seriously about that. That's a survival tactic. <laughs> we do love our torches and pitchforks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what they're going to do is they're going to go create their own community of, of new reason. Yeah. No. Yeah. I saw it. Hey. So, so I'm a user experience designer in Baltimore, and I look at the talk pages, and I'm I feel like I'm very tech savvy, and I don't know what is going on. Is there any is there any way to update them or make them a little bit more? Why I'm glad you were. Can I answer the question from Wikia? Uh, Go ahead. We actually mm -hmm. introduced in Wikia the project which is called Message Wall to replace the uh, the talk pages. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're actually working on that project. Yeah. Uh, so that's something that we can talk about. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
people, you know, and to send the stars to, but, you know, like, on my Audible account, uh, you know, after my very first book that I downloaded, I, you are now a bronze member, or, you know, I mean, it seems to me that people should be getting recognition after they've done five, and ten, and fifteen, and twenty. We, we agree. They're the ones that, I mean, that's when you really need the positive reinforcement. If you say, you know, we're going to do something for people that are a thousand, it's like... So, Wikipedia's big problem is that it's very easy to tell people that they suck, right? It's really easy to say, you did bad. Here's a warning template, you know? And so, I mean, that was actually the impetus behind creating Wikilove in the first place, was that we wanted to make it easier for people to say, like, hey, you did good, and, like, congratulations. Here's a barn star. Here's a kid. Here's what up. Turns out that works out pretty well. We actually have, like, actually, am I having a lot of talk about that research? Did I get here? Uh, no, go ahead. Okay. So yeah, we've, um, we, we've, yeah, re we've researched that says that it actually works. It keeps people around when they get porn stars and they get kittens and stuff. Everybody thinks it's frivolous, but it actually promotes survivability. So uh, one one thing though that I, I would add to to that research. So you know, so are you guys you guys are familiar with Wikilove, right? It's a little heart in in the upper uh, left hand corner where you click on it. You can you know give a bunch of you know one of the things is barn stars. Um, and you know we do have research that, that suggests that when people get barn stars, it's a, it's a positive thing. Um, but that's mainly for people who know what barn stars are, right? So the other half of the wiki love story is uh, for people who don't know what barn stars are and who don't know what a talk page is, right? And in that area, we're actually seeing uh, less effectiveness for wiki love. And I think a big part of it is that users don't know that all of this stuff is happening, right? They may be getting a wiki love, but if they don't know what what a talk page is, they won't know where to even see it, right? So um, one of the areas that we're, we're going to be working on is this whole concept of like notifications, right? So every other normal website um, today, if something happens to you, you get some kind of a message, right? Like Facebook, you get the little like, you know, red thing in the corner and, you know, with, a, with a, a iPhone mail, it's, it's the same thing. Um, but those concepts are foreign on Wikipedia, right? And that's kind of a problem because a lot of the users coming in are expecting, like when things happen to them, that they would receive some kind of, you know, modern day notification. Uh, in fact, the kind of notification you were just talking about were thanking people at five, ten, whatever edit, um, uh, milestones. Um, I have an experiment coming up that we're going to be releasing in about a week and a half. Um, so none of you guys are going to see it because not, well, I assume all of you have made your first edit by now. Um, but we are going to start by congratulating people. Thanks for making your first edit. Welcome to Wikipedia. And um, hit some of those next milestones. And we're going to run it for about a week just to see um, how those users respond to that. Uh, Leonard? Uh, yeah, so one feature that I like on Amazon and other places like that is that you get suggestions for new things to buy. Could we do that on Wikipedia as well? New uh, you should you should edit? come to this, the, the, the you know the talk I'm having about Athena. You should come to the one before that, which is by Eric uh, Moeller. He's going to talk all about that. It's very specific. Yes. The, the rated <laughs> bot that you could subscribe to is called Suggest Bot, and it's on several wikis. So you could use that in, in the interim. In the back. So, yeah. Uh, another thing I'm I'm always wondering about is. Uh, giving people other options. People get tend to simply get into trouble on Wikipedia with other people or with uh, editing their articles. And that's, that's what mostly all of the delete mes messages are about. Is there maybe a, a way to make a, a workflow which would go in an alternative uh, fashion? Because there are many alternative options to, to these things existing on Wikipedia. Just new people don't know anything about them. So you going into this direction as well, trying to help people edit, succeed to edit? Yeah, yes. Uh, like I said, um, that's the Eric Moeller's talk is actually going to be focusing a lot on that. Uh, one of the okay. <laughs> so uh, in in social software design, the uh, so communities tend to fall into to like one of two patterns basic patterns. Either, either a big plaza where you get to everybody's in one big room or something and, and, and you can see everybody and it's real easy to police and it's it's real easy to join but it, it's difficult to uh, stand out um, and you know a couple they just have it's a big open forum. Right? 
And where the other way is called warrens. And warrens are groups of small, small groups of people, 5, 10, 20, maybe, depending on the size of the warren. But they, warrens are uh, difficult to find. Uh, they're difficult to, they're easy to, to make a difference when you join, but they can be difficult to join because they have like jargon or they have, they have in, in crowd, and they're virtually impossible to police. Uh, Wikipedia's problem is that Wikipedia is entirely warrants. There is no plaza anywhere. And so what we are wanting to do in order to make this work, we're going to have to set up a situation where we take your interest graph, the things that you work on, and make that into your plaza. We're going to just elevate it so everybody has one plaza. And that will be like, okay, I like heavy metal and I have edited uh, the article about Iron Maiden and the article about Slayer, and then all of a sudden, what should happen is that Wiki Project Heavy Metal should get a notification or something along those lines and say, "This is a promising potential user uh, editor for you, and he has these skills, and you should go talk to him." <laughs> and what should happen to me is it should suggest that I join Wiki Project Heavy Metal, and then it should also say, "Like, well, you know, you also." You've edited articles in these categories, so maybe you should work on Metallica too, you know, and, and things along those lines. And, oh, you know what, the article on Megadeth needs sources here, so go fix that. Um, give you a work queue and things to do. Uh, this is something we definitely want to do, it's just very difficult to get there because it's, well, there's, we're, we're waiting on Wikidata. We're going to pawn this off on debt. <laughs> it's your fault. <laughs> She's asking what proportion of the users that we talked to did not have talk pages. Uh, I, I, I can't remember offhand, but it was, uh, I remember, it was remarkable, I, but I, I don't have the numbers in front of me. I'm sorry. That's right. I mean, 5% disruptive. That's still one of the reasons for it. How did they get 1,000 edits and not, you know, either get banned or fixed that they're uh, disruptive? So we, this, uh, this was hand coding um, thousands of uh, edits. Um, so 5% of them were disruptive in some way and ended up being reverted. Um, so it's not that like a single user made only disruptive edits. It's just like on the whole that, that's how it broke down. Some of our best editors used to be vandals. <laughs> Howie, Howie's first edit was a vandal? Yeah. I was. something I would like to be doing. We couldn't hear any of that. The, the question is uh, whether we can have something to thank anonymous users as well as registered users. It's an important problem for us. We're going to have to figure out a solution because uh, there's so many anonymous contributors. And, uh, but it's uh, difficult to do to, to technically uh, because they don't have an account. One thing we're trying to do is encourage people to register as much as we can. Um, but uh, we hope to be able to find some simple solution that might actually be able to notify those folks, but it's not easy. There's a concept uh, that uh, Brian Viver and I uh, sort of bounce, have been bouncing around, um, also with Tim Starling, uh, about proto accounts, and it's basically the idea to eliminate IP edits entirely. Um, it's, uh, right now, actually, you're, you're more anonymous as a registered user than you are as an IP user, and one of the bigger problems that we actually, I'm certain, anybody who's in here who has oversight knows is somebody is logged, accidentally logs out and makes an edit and then now they've given away their, their IP and you have to oversight the edit and this is all, all this awful stuff. Uh, and especially with the, uh, the advent of IPv6 where user IPs are now 700 characters long. Um, uh, we were thinking like, what do we, what do we, why don't we just make a proto account? So like anonymous user, just these proto accounts, anonymous user, one, two, three, four, or whatever, something simple like that. And then give you the opportunity, after you've made a couple edits, to actually turn it into a real account. 
and then you get to save those edits and then they're being brought over and made part of your, your thing. So, you know, I don't know. We, we're playing around with some ideas on that. It just might be a, a little bit more of a technical challenge than, than we'll get to. While we're talking about a, a non-account, I just thought I'd make a pitch. Um, I'm speaking at 2 o'clock on the founder which you have. I'm talking about editor engagement Jack and other things. Uh, I'm going to be talking about how we're converting anons to registered users uh, with some new tips, new features. Two today, two. Unfortunately, at the same time as the Adina project. Sorry, man. I steal all my good ideas from you anyway, so. <laughs> uh, what happened to the users after you contacted them? What happened to the users after we contacted them? Yeah, so to the bar. Oh, we, we, uh, we rounded them up. And Line them up and shot them down. Uh, no, oh, so most of them were really excited to talk to us, um, like surprisingly so. We did like Google Chat, Skype, whatever, like however people wanted to uh, to, to speak with us. And um, on the whole, they have continued to edit. Did they get more involved with the community as a result? Did you see them actually doing talk pages at the moment? Or are they just doing the same thing they were doing before the initial contact? Uh, so I don't have a, it hasn't been long enough since we ran this experiment, so it actually hasn't even been three, we're, so in the like three days after, after we spoke with them, um, they continued to edit, um, possibly at a higher rate, um, I don't even, I, it hasn't been long enough for me to have uh, 30 days of data on the, on the rest of those folks. Oh, and we did notice that some people did pick up on how to use Wikilove, and they would create their user talk page and move their barn star over. Eric? Karen, can you talk about bacon? <laughs> Come on. Karen, talk about bacon. Ask the non-bacon eater. Uh, so, um, <laughs> uh, does everybody know what bacon is? Uh, the, not the food part. <laughs> do you want to Somebody else want to describe I did. bacon? The microphone is all yours. <laughs> all right. So um, that is email that you may have signed up for that you don't really know you wanted or that sometimes comes into your inbox. Uh, so we use the concept of bacon um, to invite lapsed editors to come back and edit. Uh, so we did some experimenting. We looked at people who'd been gone for months, we looked at people who had been gone for three months, we looked at people who had been gone for a year, um, who had made um, at least 100 edits in the three, to, to the article namespace in the three months prior to vanishing. Uh, and we sent them bacon, we invited them back, said, hey, we miss you, come back, come at it. Um, and we, we found that in that three month group um, that we, we got a couple people back um, by 4% more than would have come back on their own. Does that say enough about bacon? Why is it called bacon? Because it's spam. It's spam, but a little bit better. better. <laughs> there's spam, there's ham and bacon. <laughs> ham is stuff that you sort of signed up for and you don't want. Like, you know, you accidentally signed up for a newsletter. Bacon is stuff that you're not sure you want. But, you know, like, everybody does. You want to show? OK. Yeah, that's like the big thing. So. Um, New page patrol. It's awful. Uh, actually, can you pull up special new pages? Because that would be awesome. Just so we just so we have something. To, I know. I just uh, I, I, we love. I'm gonna stand up for this. We love looking at this thing. This is like the most awful, awful, awful page ever. Uh, if it's yellow, it's not been patrolled. Now, page patrol is a very important thing. You guys, everybody understands what that is. Who does not understand page patrol? Okay, every day there's a fire hose of crap that gets just turned on all these new pages. And it's filled with um, articles about uh, spam, you know, dead grandfathers, uh, my crappy garage band, you name it. But then there's, there's a whole bunch of. There's a group of people, and, and I seriously think there's probably something wrong with their brains, but what they do is that they will go through each and every one of these and decide whether or not it needs to stay on Wikipedia. And there is no workflow. Nobody has ever created one. It was, it, everybody does it differently. We got a whole bunch of different uh, screencasts of watching all these page patrollers do it, and everybody does it differently. It's amazing. Um, so we were like, let's, 
let's face it. So we, this is actually live now, uh, this part of it. The, the page triage system is, is two, uh, it, it's two parts. There's a rebuilt list view, uh, which is very much going to give you more information ahead of time so you know, like we do some sort of artificial intelligence to determine probabilities and likelihoods that something is a crap article and should probably be annihilated. For example, no categories, it's a new editor, you know, it's an orphan. Um, we get a first sentence, a couple other nice pieces of metadata. It's a significant improvement above the other <coughs> new page patrol thing. We also fixed a couple interesting bugs with uh, the page patrol process. So we've got that, that kind of fun. So you actually can just open up all these things in the new windows and, and it'll, you'll get the uh, mark is re patrolled or mark is reviewed uh, thing there forever. Uh, and then we have this. This is the curation toolbar. This is when you are in edit uh, review mode, or curation mode, we're calling it. Uh, we, get, we have a set of tools that we're going to drop here. And you can just use them to do anything to the article. I'm sorry. Uh, like, this is what we have right now. We have a, a f almost, a, almost a twinkle of mic. Uh, so you, we, we, anybody can tag it, add details. It's all very fast, pretty, works well. We've got a whole other process they're, they're building right now, which is the deletion workflow. There'll be a, a gratitude workflow. So it's like, oh, you just created this article. Hey, thanks. Here's a barn star. Um, you know, and it, it all comes into this queue. And when you're in curation mode, you don't have to go back to the list. You can just keep tapping that. And you just go to the next article. Here's the best part. Keyboard accelerators. Mm. Yeah. You want to tag something to delete it, you just start typing five characters and you're done. Uh, but yeah, the information thing, so you don't have to hit that, hit that info, info one again. I love this one. You know, we've got like history in it. All this stuff, you don't have to go anywhere. This is what we're doing. Now this can be brought up into all sorts of kinds of stuff where uh, imagine a file workspace you know, the thing is smart, and so when it's on a file page, the tools change. Because you have different tools, right? Oh, we're going to rotate it. We're going to do something else to it. You know, that's, make actually, it easier. that's actually another thing um, to bring up is that um, this was designed to be tablet friendly. Um, so it, in curation <coughs> mechanisms, you can think are actually really good um, use case for uh, multi-touch, right? So with the, um, with the touch interface, it could make things a lot, uh, a lot more speedy. Yeah, yeah, it, it is tablet design, so everything's like got big, uh, bright, shiny buttons. Can you roll that everywhere? This is already out. Uh, it's on, on in Wikipedia? It is on in Wikipedia, but the, um, the, you can't see the curation toolbar right now because it's not quite finished, so you have to use a magic little word. Are you going to get rolled out everywhere? It's going to be like a... Uh, yes, we were going to roll this out because you know what? We have problems when we make changes to existing software. Yeah. Like, we have to get consensus and stuff, and everybody gets really mad at us. But we can actually roll stuff out alongside things. So this is not a replacement for special new pages. If you actually use the use your current system and you I have your own great workflow. Uh, um, our general policy on this sort of stuff is usually we will roll it out to any Wikipedia that asks for it, uh, any any project that asks for it, as long as it's localized. Uh, uh, just mentioned that if you are from a project and you're uh, Um, so, any questions? Um, I have a question. So, you know, this is also, right? But how, let's say, you know, I'm an editor. I don't know about this thing. How am I going to find this tool? Well, we're going to, that's always a problem, knowing that, even that there are these workflows. Uh, there are conversations that we are going to have about, like, how do we bring this up? You know, one of the conversations is, is like, hey, you got five minutes. How would you like to? review some pages. Not a central notice thing, but maybe a site notice. Just like, again, we're talking about like notifications and, and, and talking to, to people in those lines. So these are things we're going to have to experiment with. Is there a, have you done a blog post on this or is there somewhere where this is out, like where I can well, it's not done yet. Oh. It's not done yet, but if you go to mediawiki.org uh -huh. and you search for page triage. Page triage. <coughs> yeah, and the special page on English Wikipedia is a new pages feed. 
And this is the uh, this is the URL parameter if you want to see the curation toolbar. Yeah, this is, you have to just set curation toolbar equals true, yeah, but it's buggy, so. Is it as an extension? This is an extension. This is an extension, and uh, it is not a guide. Yes. Now, there would be some feeling that if it's going to be automatically notified to people. Uh -huh. that it should be notified to people who already have some considerable experience in Wikipedia, not every new editor as they join. Yes. So what we want to do is we actually want to increase the number of page patrollers. So one of the things that we discovered, uh, and one of the biggest complaints actually coming from uh, the, page ex the most experienced patrollers, is that new page patrollers don't know how to do it. And they don't know, like, you're, like you said, a copyright. They, they don't get it. Um, so we're actually building this with the intent to be a, a kind of a teaching tool as well. So exper experienced users should be able to just zip through it because they already know what G4 means. But you know, a new user, we're going to actually ask you, walk you through like we want to have a, a, a really good like wizard, but it's going to take a little time to get there. Where it like says, asks you questions. Uh, does this page belong on Wikipedia? Is it spam? Is it not? So forth and so on, and then teach you which <coughs> tag you want to use. So, guerrilla warfare. Um, I saw that there's you know, a really easy way to sort of tag pages with like, oh, this is an orphan or this has a category. Mm -hmm. Are you going to try to make an easy way so those tags could be removed from the page as well? So that's one question removing, I have for new users. Removing <laughs> is not as easy as adding. I'm sure. <laughs> um, there are some hooks that there are in this extension. Oh, by the way, this extension is like badass. It does so much more than we're even talking about here. Uh, for example, it uh, automatically knows when an article gets marked for deletion, and it puts in a log. Uh, so those of you who are into that. Um, and it removes them, too. So if you remove the deletion, we know, too, as well. Um, the, uh, so yeah, if you go back to the list view, there's like three states. It's either been reviewed, it's not been reviewed, or it's been marked for deletion. So you just don't even have to bother with it. Question? Yeah. Google has a page or has a link. You know, that I'm I'm feeling lucky that mm -hmm. you know you can go to and just you can just hit it on a whim. One of the things that we've talked about in the past uh, among some of the users is having a button saying I'm bored. Yeah, that's called <laughs> special <laughs> random. Right, but it's not really prominent. If you were to, like just hit the I, I'm bored thing and have something come up and just say if you're bored, here's some of the areas where we need help. Didn't we find that like special random is like the third most clicked on link? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, that's reviewing. But you're you're talking about for editors. For right. editors. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a, that's a really good idea. Yeah, special. Oh, I'm gonna start now. <laughs> the, I think the problem with using special random for that kind of thing is it doesn't actually take you to a workflow. Like in theory, you, it, it takes you to a random article, and if you see a problem with that article, you can then fix it. But there's no way you're getting to the new pages feed through special random, or the little category of things that need more references, or anything like that. Um, yeah, like speaking personally, I think something that um, would let you toggle between those, like just set uh, a list set on a media wiki page or something, would be very helpful. But also notice all of the sexy filters. <laughs> So this is the type of stuff we're doing to make things better. Uh, we're working from one end and, and not, I mean, we're working from both ends, but this end, in this case, this is definitely a experienced editor tool. Sir? Uh, I have a question. These, all these tools you're talking about are they for like regular users or are administrators No, these tools are for regular users. Yes. Um, I mean, there are administrative tools that some things have, we have that like, like administrative functions, but they are just functions that administrators have. It's like uh, one of the things we want to do is build in the ability to automatically oversight uh, pages. You know, we don't have that yet. So. Does anybody know what oversight means? Yeah, means you know what? I don't, don't, don't start with that today. <laughs> I know that uh, I see the bugs on that. Sven? Um, in, in regards to the I board, um, not, not to go back to what I, my stomping grounds too much, Back when Great Backlog Drive was maintained, there would be a, someone would come by and select, this is a backlog that could reasonably be get a dozen people working on it a few days a week, be killed off in a month. So it's going to be a backlog of the month thing. And so if you have people maintaining a, a list of tasks that could feasibly be chipped away at 
And and I found that it's much more likely to be chipped away at if you can actually see yourself making dents. Oh, no. You're more you're more likely to work on something that has a hundred items than has a hundred thousand. Yeah, we but we got you know we like to see this number go down. <laughs> like we want to make it into like a video game. You know, <laughs> pop 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 pop. pop. <laughs> um, fireworks Oh, yeah. And music, <laughs> you, you must, you need sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Huggle keeps track of how many users you've worn, like every hour. So maybe we should do the opposite. We apparently need to wrap up. Yeah. One thing I did want to do is um, show you guys the uh, roadmap of the features that we're working on. That was actually supposed to be the topic of <laughs> this panel. But we went a little bit astray, but that's fine. Um, Fabrice, you want to talk about this for a little bit? Yeah, uh, so it's essentially what we're uh, uh, trying to do is to offer tools that address uh, different user groups' needs. Uh, so we've been looking at, for example, different types of feedback tools. Uh, one of them, article feedback, is largely aimed at readers, trying to give them a voice and try to let them uh, offer suggestions for improvement that editors could then pick up, and, and some of them actually become editors in the process. But we also have another type of feedback, which is mood bar and, and the feedback dashboard, that <coughs> basically lets someone who has just made their first edit share their experience and be able to actually um, uh, get some responses from experienced editors. So these feedback tools are pretty useful for people who are just getting started. Uh, but the new pages uh, tools that uh, Brandon's just been talking about, the, you know, the, the new pages feed, uh, the curation toolbar, are aimed obviously at uh, editors are a little bit more mature, you know, further along in their life cycle. Uh, and uh, I'm not gonna talk too much about it except uh, to say that we're just a couple months away from being able to release it, so this is gonna be very exciting. Uh, and then the next big projects for us are going to be notifications and messaging. Uh, notifications is essentially broken on Wikipedia. It's just so hard to notify people. Um, there's just no good tools to do this. And, uh, so it's going to be a really important effort for us. And it's going to involve engineering. Like Andrew Garrett is right here working on this. Uh, and Brand is working on new designs. And he'll tell you more at the Athena project, uh, you know, what's going to work, uh, how all this is going to work. And similarly, messaging, meaning one-to-one uh, -one messaging, so that you could actually send a you know, little note to someone, and, and they can reply. And basically, modernize the whole infrastructure so you can make these things a lot, a lot easier. And then next, uh, you know, for, for next year, so we're gonna probably look at the uh, ways that we can actually make the profile more useful. Maybe have a little info box when you look at someone's name. When you click on the name, you can actually find out a little bit more about them before going to their profile and find ways to make the profiles more useful. Um, and an affiliation, so that's also really important. Eric Muller's gonna talk about that at uh, two o'clock. Uh, tools to uh, help uh, wiki projects become more efficient. You know, having access to to-do lists and ways to notify all of the members of a project or something that's going on, organize events. So it's really important. And this it obviously is aimed at editors who are really much further along in their life cycle. So the, the general point we're trying to make here is we're looking at the entire life cycle of editors. Each of these user groups has different needs. And we're basically trying to come up with some tools that are going to make it easier for them at each stage of their development. Uh, and also, if we're successful, we may be able to create very productive collaborations between new editors and experienced editors. Uh, the ability to actually make these different uh, uh, groups uh, work together and interact uh, productively is, is really important for us. So that's it in a nutshell. I uh, look forward to talking with you guys more about all this. And the stuff that's um, on the slide right now, are, those are kind of known problems um, with our uh, user experience and um, uh, user interactions on Wikipedia and, and other wiki, uh, media wiki sites. There's also another tranche of work that we're doing that's uh, more experimental and more along the lines of the uh, unknown unknowns. So Karen, um, you want to talk about um, the experimental work for a second? Uh, sure, um, I'm on the spot. Uh, so my team is working on trying uh, and data-driven AB um, or multivariate experiments to that we're gonna that we run for like a week or two, and we are trying to figure out what we can do to fix editor retention today. Um, so we are looking for all of those little silver bullets um, that will help increase the uh, number of editors <coughs> sticking around and making real contributions. Um, so we're aimed at um, producing an experiment like every week or two, 
Um, so we're experimenting generally on something like 0.6% of the encyclopedia or you know, probably you know, or some you know, small amount of usage, just enough to give us uh, confidence in what we are finding. Um, and then nothing goes into the product um, without community discussion. Um, so anytime we find anything useful, we present the results and we talk about it and make a recommendation. So that's what we're up to. I think we're um, about out of time, but we'll be around. So if anyone has any more questions, just uh, come grab one of us. I'm available to answer any questions about that. Where would that, you know, when you think you're going to make it available and the new where would that be? Uh, so we've got uh, all of our documentation and our proposed projects up on Meta. Um, we also have a hub on English Wikipedia, because um, that's primarily where we're doing our experiments right now. Um, uh, F data is available on other insight. Uh, on uh, other uh, the Wikipedias, we'll do it there. Um, and then any we are announcing on the Village Pump, we are announcing on the Wikipedia blog, uh, or Wikimedia blog, um, anywhere where we can get the word out, where we think there are people listening. Can you tweet the links? Can you tweet the links? Sure. Sure. No, no. All right, thanks.